For over 20 years, the Lord has been appearing to me and giving me visions and messages, including instructional visions. The Lord appeared to me and blessed me and anointed me an end time apostle of the gospel. He also anointed my forehead, throat, tongue, and hands in visions and trances. The Lord communicates with me in very staggering, extraordinary, and unusual ways, and I have known Christ and the Holy Spirit as living realities. The Lord even taught me how to paint by throwing more light on areas in art that I was struggling with and also giving me instructions on what I needed to do in order to be a better artist. He did this through visions and voice instructions, but that is a message for another day. The Lord consoles me and talks to me when I'm sad. He encourages me and has become more real to me than everyone else. The Lord is real. He is real. I mean, He is very, very real, very loving and very personal. It is my mission and vision to testify to you that God is real and help you experience His living presence. In my series, Journey to Spiritual Maturity and the Presence of God, I will be teaching you how to grow and be the best version of yourself and the best that you can be in Christ. If you're willing and obedient, God will transform you and your destiny. So tune in and keep getting manna from the Holy Spirit to enrich and brighten your life. Title of this post is, You Need to Spend Time With Me. Child, you need to spend time with me. So in this instructional vision, the Lord spoke to me a long time ago and said, Child, give me your heart child you need to spend time with me he also said you are now standing open your heart so that i can come and live there this has been the revelation that has transformed my life the most at that time i had a lot of christian books that i used to read books on faith books on the holy spirit and books on prayer however none of these books helped me or added to my growth as a christian they were largely unbalanced to say the least. They focused on single topics. Also, they were all contradicting each other and I was left confused. I did not know what, which way to go. Is it faith? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it prayer? How? How can I do a daily in the presence of God beyond the capacity that I was already in? How can I truly manifest as a son of God? The books and teachers concentrated on single topics and magnified those topics to the detriment of other Bible topics. In the academic world, that can work. But in order to be a mature believer and be filled with the Holy Spirit, single topics just don't work. There must be balance. You must put on the whole counsel of the Word of God and the complete armor of God. You can't ignore the armor of God and hope to be a successful Christian. It's just not possible. But a lot of Christians are doing that and it's not working for them. So it's time for you to address what you're doing wrong and fall in line with God. So what did the Lord teach me? The Lord taught me balance and multiple visions. The Lord taught me that there is no wisdom in focusing on one topic without listening to the very heartbeat of God. At that time, the topic that I focused on was faith, and faith books almost replaced my Bible. However, I did not experience growth. I did not experience growth because the books did not talk about spending time with God. So that was how this instructional vision came about and helped me. I did not even know what I was doing wrong or believing wrong, but God knew. At that time, I was always confessing the word of God about what God has done and how I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly places and how I've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I still confess the word of God now, however, I also spend time with God. I pray, I thank God, I praise Him. I worship Him. I also listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit 
and I wait upon the Lord daily for daily infilling of the Holy Spirit. I wake up in the middle of the night and pray for up to four hours every night. So now I am balanced. I do not focus on a single topic. So I was confessing what Christ has done for me, which is good. I confessed all my inheritance in Christ. These are good confessions and true indeed, but they are foundational teachings. They are basic teachings that you have when you become born again. They are food for babies, not solid meat. As an evangelist, those messages are the messages I will preach to unbelievers so that they can accept the gospel. Solid meat is what will take you to the very throne of God and make you mature as a believer. That is not how you get to Christian maturity. That is what God did for us, but we must thank Him for what He did. However, how are we responding to God's great love? If we confess our salvation and don't act on it with thanksgiving, praise, worship, obedience, spending time with God, seeking His face, we are ungrateful in our actions. If we are not led by the voice of God, we are ungrateful in our actions. James 2, 17-20 says, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in fear. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? So even the demons believe the word of God. The demons confess the word of God. But they don't obey the word of God. That's the difference. So the demons know the word of God. They believe it. But they don't obey so their work is to get you to disobey the word of god so you see they know it but they don't obey it so if you're a christian and you know the word of god you believe the word of god but you don't act on it it's just the same thing as not believing in it faith works through love but not just love faith works through actions and actions include love praise, thanksgiving, prayer, waiting upon the Lord and seeking His face, being led and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Faith works through putting on the complete armor of God. Complete, not partial. Putting on faith alone is a partial armor. So you still have stains in your inner garment if you just have faith but you don't have other armor. You ignore the other armor of God. If you are not led by the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit you have stains and you're not gonna have very clean white garment that is still gonna attract some form of discomfort into your life faith requires action but a lot of people have been deceived into thinking that all you need to do is have faith with our actions so back to my own story I was confessing and standing on the word of God as usual, and the Lord spoke to me and said, You are now standing. Now, open your heart so that I can come and live there. He said, Child, give me your heart. He also said, Child, you need to spend time with me. So there was something I needed to do that I was not doing. The problem was not with my faith. But with my actions and god gave me the actions that he required from me to actualize my faith have faith and have actions or works have the two of them and more always add see the bible will always say to your faith add love to your love add patience to your patience add, add uh, good works to good works add virtues add holiness add the Bible always says add this, add that. So it's about adding. You need to add a lot of things to your faith. 
you just don't pick one or two things and, and run up with those things and then think that's enough no you need to add just keep adding everything that the bible advised you to add just keep adding be balanced jesus cannot come and die for us a second time he has already saved us with one death we need to die daily to ourselves flesh and our passions for his glory that is how we respond to god's love so i was not hearing that at all from my church or all the books that i've been reading they never emphasize spending time in the presence of god giving god your heart or opening up your heart to god they emphasize the blessings and promises of god and greatly ignore the actions that god requires from us some even tried and talked a bit about holiness but nothing about spending time with God or God's grace. Jesus was holy, but he spent time with God. Luke 5.16 says that Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. Mark 1.35 and Mark 6.46 also say that Jesus often departed to solitary places and mountains to pray. Besides, you cannot be holy by your own power. The more you spend time with God, the more grace you will receive, and the more you will be transformed into the image of God and be changed from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord, and the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him, as we are changed into a glorious image. It is by experiencing the glory of God that we reflect the glory of God by the Lord who is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that changes us into the image of Christ. We experience the glory of God by seeking His face and waiting upon Him. His face is His glory. Jesus is the face of God. He is the glory of God the mercy of God, the grace of God, the wisdom of God. He is the life of God and the word of God. Jesus is the God that we can feel and see. He is the tangible reality of God. He is the presence of God. Jesus is the visible likeness of the invisible God, the power of God. He is the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit helps us to experience Jesus. Holiness becomes easier when you are filled with the Holy Spirit or have a greater degree of the presence of Christ in you. The Holy Spirit is the one that bears and produces holiness and love through us. He is the one that produces the fruits of the Holy Spirit through our readers' vessels. Man's power is of no use at all, really no use at all. So the books and preachers I was listening to Turn things upside down. We must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first before all things can be added to us. If we idolize blessings and faith and are seeking blessings first, then God sees our hearts and knows that our love for him is not pure. So, what did I do? I obeyed the Lord and started spending time with him and seeking his face. And that was when my life got transformed. I began to know higher depths of his love and glory. At the time that the Lord told me to open my heart so that he can come and live there, I kept wondering to myself, I just kept wondering, what does it mean for me to open my heart for God to live there? I just couldn't understand. After some time, I started spending long hours singing good news songs of praise, worship and thanksgiving reading the Bible and telling the Lord that I love him because he first loved me and saved me. The Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night and said, You are now opening your heart. You are now spending time with me. He also said, You are now in love with me and I like it. So spending time with God in worship, praise, prayer, fellowship, communion, that is how Open up your heart for the Lord's presence to dwell there. Jesus is knocking. He's constantly knocking at the door of your heart. 
he wants his presence and his glory to fill you up your heart is the temple of the holy spirit the holy spirit lives in you the holy spirit manifests the glory of god jesus is the glory of god and jesus dwells in heaven but jesus visits earth the glory of god visits earth and goes back to heaven the manifest presence of god the glory of god is not constant on earth but the holy spirit is constant on earth so by the holy spirit you can taste heaven you can experience the glory of god which is heaven on a daily basis so it is by the holy spirit that the glory of god will fill your heart and that glory is in different levels and different degrees that's what the bible means by from glory to glory being transformed from glory to glory so you need that glory of god the initial glory that came the first time that the holy spirit dwelt in you when you became born again you need that glory to keep increasing on a constant basis and then to fill you up that's when you're filled with the holy spirit and then you need to maintain that every day you need to try to be filled with the holy spirit every day the messages of god are new every day so you need to constantly refresh refresh and replenish so if you're among those that will go get olive oil or salt or this and call it the blood of jesus and call it all i mean that is pure paganism how is that the blood of jesus how how is that jesus jesus is in heaven is the glory of God. He visits earth so, and he lives in your heart. He doesn't live in man-made objects, but demons live in bottles of oil. You see? Demons live in those oil that you use and call uh, call Jesus, call anointed oil, call this, call that. The power of God. Jesus is the anointed one. There's nothing like anointed oil. Jesus is the anointed one. If you have Jesus, you, you don't need oil. So people put, some demonic pastors put demons inside bottles of oil for you. And then you take it and you're saying Jesus is here, blood of Jesus is here, this is there, there, there. I don't understand that. I, I've never done that in my life. I've never understood that. I, I, I will never understand that. And I, I really don't think a true, sincere, born again child of God would do that. Because you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will leave you inside of you and lead you not to do that but if you don't have the holy spirit then start reassessing your life are you really born again if the holy spirit is not speaking to you telling you oh, the, you're doing this wrong you're doing that is wrong that is idol worship you, you need to repent from those things because you don't know when you're going to go to the throne of god to answer for your life nobody knows when he or she is leaving this world so you need to be very careful how you live your life. So back to what I was saying. So the Lord spoke to me and then he said, you are now in love with me and I like it. He started having dialogues and conversations with me where it was now a two-way communication. This happened mostly in visions and trances. So now what is the summary? One. Spend time in the presence of God and wait upon Him several times. The Lord has consistently said to me, Wait upon me, seek my face. 2. Give your heart to God. Love God above everything, everyone, and every love. Love Him above self, husband, wife, children, father, mother, brother, sister, friends, money, worthy pleasures, fame, power and other good things. A long time ago, when I was still a Catholic and a catechism teacher in the Catholic Church, I was teaching the children from the catechism manual with questions and answers. I was reading, required to read out the questions and the children would answer. I asked the children, children, God and your parents, who loves you more? And they all echoed the answer in unison. Our parents! I was shocked. Oh, hey, come to think of it, they were children and said what was in their minds and hearts. 
A lot of adult believers are like those children in their actions, and your actions will always display what is in your heart. Adults are masters of the game of lying, hypocrisy, and pretense with deception, but God sees our hearts. Adults will respond to that same question with surprise and look at you as if you're crazy for asking that question. The answer would be one in unison. God loves us more than our spouses, children, parents, and so on. However, on a daily basis, adults sacrifice God's commandments, will, word, desire, and happiness for their loved ones. Adults are crucifying Christ all over again and grieving the Holy Spirit. They constantly grieve the Holy Spirit without remorse. But Jesus said that those who do not love him more than family are not worthy of him. Action is when you obey the word of God by living in his will, waiting upon the Lord and seeking him. Action is when you pray without ceasing. Action is when you thank God in all circumstances and rejoice in the Lord always. Action is when your lips are filled with God's glory and praise all day long and every night. Action is when you celebrate the love of Christ and thank him for dying in your place on the cross. Action is when you put on the complete armor of God. Action is when you are constantly led by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Action is when you pray the prayer point given to you by the Holy Spirit. Action is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Action is when you open your mouth and ask. Because the Bible says that if you do not ask, you will not receive. Action is when you do not forsake fellowship and church service. Action is when you intercede for others before the throne of grace. Anytime I'm not experiencing the presence of God, I know that I'm being disobedient. And I also know that I'm not spending time with God. I put the blame on myself. I don't put the blame on anyone else, including Satan and witches. Christ rules above everything else, and all power belongs to him, including the power of judgment. All power belongs to Jesus, and angels, principalities, powers, and demons are all subject to him. Focus on spending time with God in order to experience his presence on a daily basis. When you do that, the demons will be subject to you and they will know you the way they knew Jesus and Paul. You will not be running away from them, but they will be running away from you. Christ wants you to become a mature believer. He wants you to display the manifestations of the sons of God. The only way that you can do that is by waiting upon him and constantly seeking his face until you become a vessel of honor as a mature believer. May God give you the grace to persevere and persist until you become a vessel of honor.